Welcome to But Why Those Latest Let's Talk. Tonight, we're going to be talking about high fantasy and Dragon Age. So each Let's Talk, we dive into different areas of pop culture and explore what they mean to us with the help of a panel of guests. I'm Josh Silverman, host of Massively Affected, a podcast where I bring on a guest and ask them, why Mass Effect? Joining me for this lovely special here, we have Liana Rupert, Senior Associate Editor for Game Informer. What up? <laughs> Kelsey Moon, Narrative and Content Designer, working on Death Carnival and more. Yep, happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> uh, Eric Van Allen, Senior News Reporter for Destructoid and co-host of Normandy FM. I thought you said ho host for a second. I was gonna have I was gonna have issues with you. Uh, <laughs> that's no. Ken's role. That's not mine. <laughs> um, hello, hi, I'm Eric. <laughs> and Ray Apollo, community marketing specialist at Twitch. Hello, hi, it's me, the official ho host. Um, wait until you find out how many people I uh, slept with in Dragon Age. It'll be great. <laughs> okay, we're, we'll, we'll have to compare uh, notches in the bedpost there, Ray. But uh, <laughs> I'm just sitting here bed, like, lol. I'm just, I, I'm just happy I get to talk to like four of my favorite people about, you know, Dragon Age and, and high fantasy. So the way this is going to work is for our first half here, we will be talking primarily about high fantasy and what that is, you know, and our, our thoughts on that entire, I guess, genre, essentially. So kind of starting us off, you know, I've been, uh, my thinking is kind of wanted to look at the, the varied approach that different games and the game companies have taken with high fantasy. You know, we have Elder Scrolls, Dragon Age, Dragon's Dogma, Dragon Quest, just a whole lot of fucking dragons, but not a not fucking dragons. Uh, I mean, Divinity... we're not here to kink shame. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck fair those enough, dragons. Fair Don't enough. let those dreams be dreams. <laughs> I mean, we have uh, Divinity Original Sin 2, Witcher, some, uh, high, so we have some Final Fantasy games, even Breath of the Wild and uh, most Zelda games kind of fall into this high fantasy thing. So kind of just to, to start us off, what would you say, and we'll go around, is your favorite high fantasy game or game series? Uh, let's start with, actually, we're just going to go around circle here. Eric. My favorite high fantasy games. I mean, it's like, a, it's tricky, right? Because right. there's like different kinds. And sometimes, you know, like there's very traditionally like D&D &D types. Like, I think the last time I was on here, I talked a lot about Baldur's Gate 3. And I'll probably end up talking a lot about Baldur's Gate 3 again, because that game is just real good. But um, it's definitely been like a recent one that I've enjoyed a lot. But even stuff, you know, like some of the older Final Fantasies, like vary between high fantasy and then like steampunk and, and cyber, not like cyberpunk, but like definitely machines and stuff. So I don't know. I If I'm going like traditional fantasy, I probably am going Dragon Age, but I'm probably going like Dragon Age 2 because I like that, yes. that like seedy That's dark true. fantasy. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I want to see... I want to see the bad parts of the fantasy. I don't want to see like the the you know paladins and stuff. I want to know where the rogues are hanging out. Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, let's see, uh, Kelsey, what are you thinking? Uh, I was gonna say Dragon Age, but I'm actually gonna go with Elder Scrolls. I think because nice. like that was the first like I think first video game really um, that I that I really played that was high fantasy and genre because most of what I was playing before was like platformers and you know more kid stuff. Um, and I say that like with a lot of love, um, but Oblivion, I think was my first one that I played. And yeah, yeah think about that often. Uh, <laughs> don't really think about, you know, too much going through the portals and spending hours within said portals, trying to fight a bunch of demons and stuff. But uh, yeah, it was a good experience. It was just a lot of fun uh, just roaming the countryside and uh, joining the Dark Brotherhood. I think Always was like good. my favorite part. Like that's the mm -hmm. first thing I do now. <laughs> Anytime I load up Skyrim, like gotta get over there. Very exciting. Dark Brotherhood, then Thieves Guild is pretty Thieves much. Thieves Guild. Oh yeah, Elder those Scrolls are my game. two. Yep. Yeah, there's like every other guild. I'm like, hmm, you play there's, the nothing, there's nothing there for me. No. You need to be all stealthy and stuff. And then the stories are usually, exactly. they're and usually the better stories of the guild stories. They are for sure. And then there's also Bryn Yolf, uh in Skyrim, which you, you know, you have to love him. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I gotta go yeah. see my mans. <laughs> Le Liana, what about yourself? Shit, man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like asking somebody to like pick their kids. Like on, on one given day, I will say my favorite is Dark Alliance, Baldur's Gate, Dark Alliance, PS2 era, because that was dope. 
<clears throat> but then other times, I don't know. Does Guild Wars two count? I feel I, like that's yeah, like a yeah, rare, yeah. Because yeah, some I think parts so. of their future and I don't know. Guild Wars two is a is one that I go back to a lot, and I don't usually like the. I don't usually like classify the MMO RPGs into that fantasy realm just because I feel like it's its own niche, but that one's really easy to get lost into. And they just, they go really weird positions with it, but that's also me just trying to avoid saying the obvious answer, which is Dragon Age 2. I mean, we're here, you know, uh, our back, you know, our second you know part of the show is going to be all about Dragon Age. The so Dragon Age is an easy one to uh, <laughs> state. So I, I see nothing wrong with that. On your whole kind of thing about MMOs and stuff like that, I, while MMO is the genre of game, I still think, you know, you still you can separate the genre of game and the genre of, uh, of uh, well, of, of the type of story, I think can be separated. Not, every, not in everything, mind you, but so I think MMOs definitely work in that regard. Uh, Ray? I mean, so it used to be Dragon Age. Um, but then I found a, a wonderful little game called Divinity Original Sin 2 and completely and totally fell in love. And so it is that game, Divinity Original Sin 2. Yep. I have a... a literal bag of bones. <laughs> <laughs> literal bag of bones. Very. I have a, a weekly uh, Divinity Original Sin 2 game I play with a couple of people, from a few people from the game industry, and it's, it's a blast. Mm-hmm. So I totally... And actually, I originally bought the game ray because of seeing you tweet about it so my heart is happy my mission is accomplished <laughs> <laughs> you've accomplished much uh mine uh you know dragon age is, is up there elder scrolls is majorly up there but for me just because of late it has to be critically acclaimed mmo uh final fantasy 14 with a free mm. i can't even do the bit <laughs> 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 couldn't get through it but you know i but seriously final fantasy 14 is probably my favorite of the uh of the high fantasy uh stuff of late and just like that was not my uh, Final Fantasy games. Growing up, I was Final Fantasy VIII was my first one. So I like the more tech-oriented stuff. But as I've gotten older, skewing to those more fantastical kind of high fantasy things has vibed with me a bit more. But, uh, you know, we've talked about, you know, favorites. But what makes a high, f- what makes, that's hard to say, what makes a high fantasy game good? Uh, what do you feel that experience, what is re- required of it? Uh, Gonna go with, let's see, Liana, what do you think? I feel like uh, this is something that is a lot of, or I think it's a really common trap that a lot of studios fall into, is if you're planning on making this massive, like part of fantasy is it's immersion and it's it's lore that you have to dive into and every story kind of has a sub story type thing. And I we actually interviewed the, the lead director of Elder Scrolls Online and, and he was very honest with me he was like yeah because I, I asked him I was like you know the game kind of sucked at launch and he was mm-hmm. like yes it did <laughs> he was very transparent he was like we didn't have an identity we didn't know what we wanted it to be therefore it wasn't anything and now it's one of the best games out there with the, each expansion it found more of its footing and things like that and I feel like that's the trap that a lot of these these kind of genres fall into is it's a great genre to do. It's a, it's a great gamescape to do, especially if you're a creative type. There's a lot of freedom in that genre, but you need to have a plan going in. And you have to, even though like game development and storyboards, they change. I mean, that's just part of the process, process but like you need to make sure that it's still their margin of error, that you're still staying within that identity. Because if you don't have that, that's going to read across the player then the fetch the quests are going to feel like fetch quest the story is not going to feel cohesive gameplay mechanics might not feel right with the way the story is progressing like there's all these little components that tie into just making sure you have a firm identity going in and you're staying to some form of that throughout the entire process that was a monologue i apologize <laughs> no that was, it was a good monologue i like i mean if it, you know it's true i mean identity yeah sticking true the identity makes is what it is i mean you look at both uh, elder scrolls and at final fantasy 14 two mmos that launched and you know didn't know what the hell exactly they were doing and both kind of figured out their footing as they went and have kind of grown into these you know well-regarded ones now that they actually like figured out what their identity was and how they fit into both their legacies and you know their respective genres uh let's see how about eric what do you what do you think on what makes a high fantasy game good? I mean, for me personally, I just like it to, 
I, I don't want to say like stay grounded, but I like for it to stay very like personal and, and about like the characters at the heart yeah. of it. I was having a weird thought train in my head where I was like, does a Tales game count as high fantasy? So I was like, how much machinery can be in this game before it's considered not high fantasy anymore? Um, mm. But I think for high fantasy, I like it to, even when it's going into the realm of magic and creatures and you know the the things that can't exist in this world i like it to still have a basis somewhat in like relatable things and i kind of tend to lose the thread on high fantasy stuff that gets way too deep into its own lore without really like creating a relatable like conflict for for the person that that's you know watching it playing it reading it whatever um so i think that's why a lot of stuff that that rings true for me tends to be the more like character focused character driven stuff uh planescape torment is one that i haven't brought up yet but um i have played a bit of that i've not played all of it but um every time i play that game i'm like oh this is like this shows that like high fantasy can be D and all that and still tell like a story that's extremely relatable and compelling and uh really get you invested in the characters so i think it's got to have that it's got to make me care about the characters regardless of whether or not they're like a super powered magician or whatever you know it's cool it's cool i'm happy for them that they've got all that magic and stuff but uh <laughs> I, I i gotta care about the characters and the conflicts in the setting as well yeah Ma I mean, yeah it makes a lot of sense kelsey how about yourself yeah i guess i agree with eric too is like we want the characters to feel like very real and like they're an actual person that you would interact with like if you were to just somehow be transported into that world um beyond that i think like i really do look to the world building because like mm -hmm. just going beyond like oh there's a country here there's like a group of elves over here like i want to know how they interact with each other i want to know about the religions i want to know about how the people go about their daily lives like I want it to feel like it's an actual place that you could visit a living breathing place and just like politics are especially very interesting to me. And that's one of the reasons why I really like Dragon Age, especially is because I think there's a lot of just rich history between all of the countries and a lot of really interesting push and pull um, between everyone that you encounter. And everyone has like an idea or like opinions about the world around them. And so I think that just kind of makes it feel very real in a lot of ways. Like your uh, characters and companions are always gonna have something to say about the the world around you and so it just feels like you're just hanging out with buddies and just kind of talking about what went down on twitter today or like what was just reported in washington post you know <laughs> it just it feels a lot more grounded i think like eric said um just yeah just focusing more than on just like the magic and i guess like about the the fun part of the fantasy and yeah. how they have their own lives too in dragon mm -hmm. age is great like finners and isabella's friendship that develops and i yeah. you know i love that too i mm -hmm. especially when you bring it up like that like oh man and that's what makes it stick for you like it makes mm -hmm. it stick in your head because it's like no i was actually a part of that world it wasn't just a passing experience for the next couple hours it was i was there i don't know i like that yeah yeah so for sure <laughs> geeking out <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, the uh, the way that the individual storylines kind of tie together and your well, well, if the game has companions and even if it doesn't, ties into the background politics and ties into the different nations and everything. It, I, I, love, I love the narrative that we are not, in fact, part of that's surrounding us, you know, mm -hmm. as it's kind of said by a few times here. Like, that, that's, that's the big deal for me. But, Ray, what about yourself? So for me, it, it, it really depends because with something like Dragon Age, um, where the world can't be and wasn't like super large, it was the characters and their personalities and what they were doing that filled it for me, that made me feel like I was there because I was getting to know them. I was going through their struggles with them and kind of trying to you know figure out where I fit in that, which helps. It's like, okay, how do I fit in this group? Because I don't necessarily fit in right away. Like, mm -hmm. I, I like stuff like that. But then on the other hand, I have games like Divinity, which I get immersed in because the world lets me use it as what it is, a world. I get to go in there and do what I think I should be doing, but not in a specific way. I can figure out how to do, uh, you know, just about anything a different way than what would be the ideal way of doing it, which is it makes it feel more natural to me because it's like, OK, well, I have this idea for this. I wonder if this will work. And then it does. And I'm like, oh. 
that's the game respecting me as the player, <laughs> which I really, really, really appreciate. Uh, but it also has um, kind of a, a sort of impact on the world. What you're doing It's like, hey, well, you decided to murder that guy. So that quest line is completely gone. <laughs> but since you did that, somebody else is kind of like, well, I mean, you murdered that guy. So I mean, you might as well work with me. And, and mm -hmm. it just branching paths and options that, you know, kind of, I don't want to say are true consequences for my actions, but uh, things that change as a result of what I decide to do or not do really makes a big difference to me. Um, so just, yeah, freedom of choice, great characters. Mm -hmm. um, and just let me, let me throw a fireball and I'm usually fine. <laughs> <laughs> At all. And it fits in Divinity in the middle of a town square that starts a minor riot that allows you to uh, <laughs> wipe out some <laughs> ma magisters. Not that I've experienced that at all. Uh, that. No, but I mean, it's well. Don't come over. <laughs> for for you know, for me, it's it's the experience. You know, think about listening to what everyone said. For me, a lot of it is that experience of uh, D and D, but getting that you know the video game format, which is funny. For the longest time, I really loved what you know, Dragon Age allowed me to do. But you know, when you get into it, Dragon Age, does have you know option A, option B, option C that lead to scenario A, B, C, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So something like Divinity has been a lot more fun or even going back, dialing back to something like Morrowind where you could really just set out into the world and, you know, wipe out the, in the case of Morrowind, like a, a main story person and get in the game literally just said, yeah, you're not, the world has been changed. You're not, you, you, you've entered a fail state. You can't continue the main storyline, but have fun, have a good time <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. But you could do stuff like that. I love games that just kind of give me the agency in this fantasy world to just make up my own rules and own dynamic and just uh, kind of set things up as, as I see fit, as it were. It, it's, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh, we, we kind of like touched on this a little bit but you know the uh, next kind of thing point we're going to talk about is the power of world building uh what makes a good world to dive into you know the characters the stories the people the politics so we kind of touched on this a little bit but you know what for you is that essential piece of world building what's or even what was an essential world building moment in a high fantasy game if we want to like narrow it down to a specific uh experience that you had that you were just like oh the world clicked for me in that moment. And I just, I, I just understood, like for me, it's not high fantasy. I can immediately think of one for Mass Effect, but uh, that, that's, that's easy for me. But for Dragon Age, it was in Dragon Age 2, I already loved uh, Origins and uh, Awakening, but specifically Dragon Age 2, uh, I had this click moment when it started, uh, when it started Act 2 and we jumped ahead essentially and it was like, all of a sudden I was talking to my companions and they're telling me about everything they did in the intervening years between act one and act two. And that was such a real moment for me that that was when I kind of just got immersed suddenly into the city. Like I enjoy the first act, but that was the moment where it was just like all this world building and then being like, hey, Hawk, haven't seen you in a while. So yeah, I was doing this, this, and you know, oh, you, you were doing things. Okay, cool. And it like, and then I started reading like the codex entry, what Isabella was doing in the last couple of years, what, you know, Fenris is doing the last few years. And it was like, who they're doing the last and few who they, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was like, oh, this is, this is some neat stuff going on. Uh, and yeah, that was kind of my moment. Uh, Ray, how about yourself? Do you have a defining world building moment? So I think a def like a, a truly defining one for me uh, for the first time was when, <laughs> um, I think it's when you um, are working with the the Dark Brotherhood in Skyrim, mm -hmm. you get that letter. Yep. And they're like, we know. And I'm like, oh no, how did they, how did they find out? Cause like, I'm legit like, I, there's no way they'll ever find out. And then I'm like, oh, oh. And it was like, that was like, oh no. Okay, mm -hmm. the game got me, you, you tricked me. I always thought I was being cunning and you know, like playing the video game and the video game said, nah. We knew the whole time. And it was just, it was that moment where like my whole brain just kind of like imploded. I was like, oh. mm -hmm. it's so it's, good. It's know, such, it is, such a good moment. It. I loved it. It is just like, I, and from that point, I was just completely sold on that game. Just like, I yeah. loved it before, but at that point I was like, yep, 
I really like this. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just to riff on that, like I remember the first time that happened to me when I got that letter. I'm like, oh, I gotta get out of town, man. Mm-hmm. Like I gotta pack my shit and I gotta go. <laughs> 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 They're tracking me down. Yeah, no, that was a great moment. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, Kelsey, do you have a, a, a another one or as well for a world building moment for yourself? Um, this is like kind of a, a minor one. This is the one that just like immediately popped into my head. But in Witcher 3, when you're going to find the crones for the first time and you see like a bunch of like candy looking things just hanging from mm. trees. I liked that. It was a very uh, grim I think a uh, trail <laughs> yeah. that you were following there, but it was, I just thought that whole storyline was extremely well done as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you see like how much reactivity it actually ended up having within the world. Um, Cause there's just like several different parts where like you realize like, Oh, I've actually made a difference here with the variation of choices that I've made um, throughout this quest line. Um, yeah. So I think that would probably be, that would be one for sure. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, Eric. I it's it's tough. I'm like going back and forth between two. Um Pick I guess two, I'll, I'm doing two. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh the the first one is kind of a small one, I guess, but it's from Baldur's Gate 3 and like going into pre-release, you know, I was reading up on all the characters and stuff and so I knew that everybody loves Shadowheart. Everybody's Shadowheart's so great. And I was even talking to someone and they were like, "Oh yeah, when I met Shadowheart, like she was already <laughs> flirting with me. She was already like Let's go. And and I was like, well, mm. wh- okay, cool. Okay. So I guess I'll romance Shadowheart. And so I started playing and I, I chose to play as a Githyanki because I was like, I don't want to play a normal, boring human character or whatever. I'm going to play a Githyanki character. This sounds awesome. And I meet Shadowheart. She's racist. She's incredibly <laughs> racist. <laughs> I was confused. She didn't like me either. Like, I, I don't even remember what I picked the first time, but she was she was very, very cold hearted. And I was like, yeah. what happened? Yeah, she like, Would she call called me like a flat nose or something. And I was like, what the hell? And I was Ooh. like, um, so yeah, that was the moment where I was, for me, like coming from, you know, stuff like Dragon Age and, and obviously like Larian's, you know, they've been doing their own kind of RPG for a while. And, and I've mm-hmm. been wanting to play Divinity for a while, but this is kind of my first time spending a lot of time with a Larian game. And um, I was like, oh, they're like really comfortable with having their characters just be shitty towards you and be mean to you and like be the characters that they are and that they've been raised to be kind of like tyranny in that way where they're like, yeah, these characters kind of (laughs) suck. And, (laughs) you know, you can explore the breadth in which they suck if you would like. And I think that's cool. I like that. And also I ended up like like, Lazel's way cooler. So whatever. But um, <laughs> the the other one for me was, and I, I've realized this is high fantasy. I I deem it high fantasy. Uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. The part where you go back. Uh, this is like after the time skip and all that, and you have like sided with your house and all that, and you go to fight the other two houses, and you realize it's on the battlefield that the training battle had taken place on years before. Yep. And. Oh, I'm like getting chills right now just, just thinking about that. You gave like, it to me too, actually. It's yeah, you le- just messed me up. Like for it, real. <laughs> it's legitimately so good because I mean, like, they in, in all the pre-release stuff, if you had been following it, they were talking up like, oh, let's meet back here, you know, years later. And I always was like, Oh, that's probably just them being like bittersweet and bad things are gonna happen. They're like, No, welcome to the class reunion. We're all gonna stab each other now. And that was <laughs> that was the part where the game was like, Hey, guess what? You're gonna have to kill some of these characters. Yeah. Like, not just mm-hmm. they're going to die, but you are going to issue the attack command that kills them. And like that was the moment where I was like, oh, Three Houses is not messing around. And I love Fire Emblem as a series, but that was the moment where I was like, oh, they've gone very hard from being the game where it was like, let's ship all the characters and make happy children from them and build a big family army to like, oh, there's a lot of murdering going down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I, I, was, I the, the moment, sorry. there was one moment in particular where I realized what was happening at that part. And uh, I was like, oh, oh so the kids that I didn't, so I got, mm-hmm. I had a real moment of like, do I keep playing this? I know I'm gonna have to, they won't, they gotta die. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, but I like, I like them. I like, all, I, didn't, I didn't hate any of you. And it's like, stop. <laughs> but I think there was, there was one redeeming moment for that was where uh, I was in a fight with one of the other students. And then they were like, you know what? 
you weren't that bad, so I'm gonna come help you. And I was like, oh thank God. This, oh thank God. <laughs> so it was just, yeah, that really caught me off guard. But man, I loved it. It was for me with three houses, like I had gone out of my way on my first playthrough to get everyone to join my house. And the one person I couldn't. Uh, I knew you couldn't have the second in command effectively of each house join you. And I didn't find out till later that Hilda actually can join a different house. And I had, but I had no idea. And I thought, and I read, oh, well, maybe she'll still join anyways. And I went up to her as my byleth and I was like, hey, and then just you know, killed her. And I was like, well, I'm sad now. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like I actually had byleth take, like take the shot essentially. And I was like, and because I was so overpowered in that game, it was a one shot. So it was just like, you know oh. what your problem was, was you didn't side with the golden deer. You were supposed to side with the golden. Deer. I, my first time through was an Edelgard playthrough, mm -mm -mm. which I, yeah, which I, I was accidentally mm. a cop. It was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't choose to be a cop on purpose. It was a mistake. That's my That's current playthrough I'm in the middle Claude. of since last year, actually. <laughs> the, the deer know what is up. The deer, oh, the deer were always my favorite. I kept saying to myself, I'll play the deer next, is what I, what I said. And I was just like, Edelgard's cute, so I'm going to play Edelgard play through. Is really my, <laughs> was my my logic. I was like, she she, she cute. I go I go that route. No. It's the wrong choice, but as a Fire Emblem player, I respect the choice. It's, yeah, well, <laughs> I understand it, the choice. Edelgard cute. I was in love with Petra. It really was, the, it was the route to go with at that point. But uh, I, I was so about stressed Petra? out. Oh, go ahead. No, I, I was also stressed. Go ahead. No, I never, I couldn't beat it because I kept feeling like I was making the wrong choices. <laughs> I feel you. I could have, the game kind of does that to you, though. Uh -huh. It's like, it's like you out a lot. It's very ambiguous. It's like, was that actually a good idea? I, I was having so many emotions. I was like, I'm in a glass case of emotion right now. I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> to like spin it around to like the broader point like that's kind of what i really like about three houses is i always kind of thought that they might patch in a true ending later or come up with some way to make all the houses live in harmony and but no that that game you just gotta make a choice it's literally mm -hmm. like who do you side with and this is going to create conflict one way or another like bloodshed will be unavoidable so you've got to make a choice and i actually really respect that about the game because i mm -hmm. think Dragon Age included, there's a lot of times where games will kind of give you like choice A or choice B, but then they'll be like, but there's choice C back here. And if you did the right choices previously, now you can get like the one where everybody works together. Yeah. Um, we call that the Geth Mass Effect. We call it the Geth Corian. Maybe a little bit more Mass Effect than Dragon Age. But, but Dragon um, Age does that as well, though. I mean, they definitely do give you kind of those moments uh, with stuff. Yeah, there's the siding hard with the Templar mm -hmm. or with the mages, but there are moments of things where you can really kind of push it towards you're siding with the mages, but you're not necessarily wiping out kind of. There, there are mm -hmm. moments mm -hmm. like that. It's not as clear cut. I feel like is massive. Yeah. So. Like sometimes those choices work, but a lot of times it just feels like they're really pulling their punch in a lot mm -hmm. of, in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. So it's like, I definitely respect what like three houses was doing where it's like, you really have to think about your choice. Like it's not as simple as just like pressing a or B, you mm -hmm. know, like you really have to like kind of project ahead and think about consequences um, down the line. If you're going to not those be are, the ground, you kind of choices. If you're gonna knock yeah. me to the ground, at least kick me while I'm down. It's like at that point, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of where I'm at. Uh, Liana, what about yourself? What you said you had two defining world building things that stood out for you. As I well. got two, and they're both Dragon Age because I'm boring and basic. So, what up? What up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm only focused on one thing and one thing only, and that's Dragon Age. Um, okay, so mine, it doesn't have anything to do with choice, actually. It's, uh, I like the rewritten history that the Dragon Age series has undergone throughout the entire mm -hmm. trilogy. It does a really good job of making you feel like you have a grasp of what's going on and how the world works, and then it just rips it right from underneath you. And like the best example I could think of is in Dragon Age Inquisition, spoiler warning if anybody didn't play it, but there's a a scene where you go to the last well, you try to steal, see what Corypheus is going after, and you you run up to the well and you meet like the ancient elves, and and you actually find out like, oh no, elves kind of boinked themselves. It wasn't Taventer. Taventer was just these lazy jerks that came along after and was like, hey, 
we did like the meme where they like somebody does something and then mm-hmm. the other stick figures like i did this yep <laughs> that was kind of symmetric but from drag especially dragon age 2 with Fenris's story and even isabella's tie-ins like we are taught like to venture is this omnipotent all-knowing all-powerful entity that destroyed and derailed the entire history of Thetis and then we just find out no they're just piggybackers like they're nothing really special mm-hmm. and I and I like having like Dorian there too really makes that 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 lore hook so much more powerful because you see like the disbelief on his face if you have him and Solus together seeing that brief interaction between the two is just to me was such a world-changing moment because of the impact it's going to have on Dragon Age 4 and obviously the tie-in with Trespasser DLC 2. I was just like, holy shit, like they really just in the last Mm -hmm. half of the game completely shook what we knew about a key point in history that has been constantly addressed in all three games. That's pretty wild. Um, Yeah, I mean, just the saying, like the end of Inquisition through Trespasser upends literally the entire lore of the entirety of Thetis as we knew it, Mm -hmm. and it works. That's yeah. the thing is it's not yeah. a retcon. It doesn't feel like it's not done as a retcon. It, it literally is done no, as a just, way that this makes perfect sense. I just didn't have context. It's the well, truth. It feels, yeah, and it feels like an earned twist mm-hmm. in a lot of ways too. It's like, it, it, like you said, like it doesn't feel like they were just like, oh shit, let's like reverse course. Like it just, it feels like it was always meant to be that way. Mm-hmm. Well, look at and this way. Think- everyone's an unreliable narrator, essentially. Yep. Think about like a time in your life when you were having a, a debate or something where you were just so convinced in that moment, you were right. Like I was right. There's nobody can tell me differently. And then you look back and you're like, oh, like, yo, no, that was not it. <laughs> like we all have those moments and we learn from them, but that was, yeah, that was cool. Like with those two, it was just like mm-hmm. growth <laughs> and learning <laughs> and, and now we could forge a new future. And I don't know. I thought it was really cool. And then, yeah, my, my cheat one, because I don't feel like it really counts because it's not like world shattering. It was just kind of mm-hmm. a cool, and I think it might only have been like a fourth wall type break. And it really wasn't a fourth wall. I don't even know why I said that, but to me, just because of my own personal interest, but I love true crime. Even when I was a kid, I was always looking at open case files and seeing if I could solve them myself. <laughs> and I really liked the storyline with Hawk's mom in Dragon Age 2 mm-hmm. because that was a crime we could easily see in modern day times. It was this like crossover of tragedy and horror that kind of bridged the gap between fantasy and reality mm-hmm. because the grotesqueness and the hor- you know, just the horrific nature of it was so carnal and so primal that it wasn't dated by time. And those kind of situations are really hard to pull off. And it could have very yeah. easily fallen into the campy aspects with the design choice. And it didn't because of that realistic hook. And to me, even though that's not like I maybe not epitome of of lore building and, and world building and things like that, but it's that nice juxtaposition ju- juxtaposition between the two realities of common human experience. That's why people like romance and games so much. It's when you can mm-hmm. see that mirror, and it's something you could easily see that breaks through that genre. Makes you makes you really remember that world, in my opinion. But that was my second one because I don't think it technically counts, but it counts in my noggin. No, no it but counts. It counts. Yeah. No, that actually counts for me a lot. Uh, the whole storyline with Hawk and and the mother and trying to like figure out her uh, what, what's going on with you know the person she's with, and then obviously her you know her death and stuff like that. For me, was a very important thing because and not to get like too dark or you know, but like for me, I identified with it so strongly because my mom had died a few years before Dragon Age Two came out, and I was still at that point. She wasn't actually murdered, but I had, was convinced that a doctor. Ha- but I was she died of cancer, and I was convinced it was a doctor's fault still at that point mm-hmm. because of grief and stuff like that. I was absolutely determined and convinced that this doctor made a, a, a bad call and yada yada that kind of mentality but like I, it was weirdly enough one of dragon age 2 and then a few other things that i played that time but specifically that playing through that storyline kind of was this weird cathartic release of solving a m- murder of a mother and something like that and like, that ruined me trying to play that shit but like it still stands out as like a defining world building thing and amongst all the other reasons of dragon age 2 is why that game i think stands out so strongly for me mm-hmm. is because of that experience and as you said, uh, how we identify with it and how we identify with it at certain points in our life. And there's, for, as for me, that a very timeless energy to that experience of the game. Hmm. So 
you know, yeah. <laughs> not to, <laughs> like, no, I it, love, it, I mean, yeah. I don't love that, but I love that you shared it. And yeah. I love that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I feel like those reflections of how our real, I mean, I write about that exact topic all the time with MS. Oh yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Thane helped me come to that. Like it really does. Like games are very powerful in those ways, even in the ways that we don't know we need them to be. It can mm-hmm. be that rip off of the bandaid or yeah. confronting. I remember the first time I played angry Hawk. I, that was when I kind of realized I had some anger issues myself yeah. because I was like, that is something I would say. That's not a really appropriate way to respond to something. And it really kind of made me reflect on, okay, I'm, I'm getting into this habit of where I'm being a little bit more reactive mm-hmm. that is true to my nature. And that kind of helped me ground myself a little bit and, and, mm-hmm. and dealing with trauma and tragedy and, and just everyday life. Yeah, I think that's really powerful for sure. Uh- Liana, actually, a similar thing I was going to say. For me, it was always playing the sarcastic character through in video games, always choosing mm-hmm. the sarcastic thing, always choosing the humorous remark and stuff like that. And a few years ago, like I think it was just before or just after my oldest uh, kid was born, I started like looking at some of these, like started really like listening. I wasn't just choosing sarcastic because you know I saw like the, you know, the, the smirky face. I chose and really like listened to what the character said, and I was like. I like a douchebag in this game. Like it was kind of my response. And I started thinking to myself, wait, is this how I talk to people in real life? Cause this is why I'm doing it. Cause I feel like mm-hmm. this is most me. And I started really like, and I started replaying a lot of games that had sarcastic options. I was like, wow, that's, I'm, I'm kind of an asshole, aren't I? <laughs> it was, was kind of my realization. And I may not be the nicest person with how I uh, speak to people, but it was again, it was gaming kind of like giving me that moment at a, at a, you know, a crucial fulcrum point in my life to realize, oh, okay, like let's let's re-examine this thing. So like the same thing you're saying, like you're you're choosing angry hawk all the time, and you're like, wow, do do I sound like this kind of response? And it's it's really interesting, uh, what we discover in those random places within games. Mm-hmm. So, love it. Yeah, games can be extremely therapeutic mm-hmm. at times. I will have to say. Yeah. You can learn so much about yourself and Mm -hmm. yeah, like I basically like you two talked about, it's a, it's a very nice way to process things without like hurting anybody in the real world. I found so. No doubt. I've, you know, just one thing out of the chat here, the, but why though account saying, I love hearing how lives connect to games just reminds you that we all bring our own stories and identities into the games we play. Just wanted to read that one because that is definitely on target. It's true. I'm I'm a lover and I'm 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 a very good lover in in the in the romantic. <laughs> and it was uh, I found that out the hard way when I uh, played The Witcher Three, and I fell in love with both Triss and Yennefer. Mm-hmm. Y'all know how that goes. Mm-hmm. I, it was like no, I was like I genuinely loved both of them, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> well, I couldn't choose, so. Oops. <laughs> you couldn't choose, so it was made couldn't for choose, you. I see. <laughs> this is why you always go for the goth GF, all right? This is why. It was, it was I love them both. Easy. They bo- they were both just wonderful, and they helped me in different points in time where I needed them. And therefore, when we got to that point, I was like, oh, man. Well, um, I guess this is where we are. Uh-huh. <laughs> That was when his playthrough ended. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ray deleted the save and never continued. Never playing. went back. <laughs> so did you try to romance everyone in Persona 5 then? Did you get that ending? Nope. <laughs> See, that was where I, I was a good young lad because I learned such a harsh lesson in Witcher 3. <laughs> you learned. You learned. <laughs> See, you I got to guard throw. your heart. You have to guard your heart. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> See, I'm so still in the middle of nobody. <laughs> I'm in the middle of like a year long playthrough of Persona 5 right now at this point and the, the last thing I was doing in the game was when the game starts opening up and letting you make those choices and I was like up to that point I'm like I know exactly who I'm going uh, for and then that was like two or three choices presented to me and I'm like I'm not playing this game anymore because I don't want to <laughs> make this choice at this time in my life and I put it down now for like the last three or four months <laughs> because in part of that so hard if you're a people pleaser because then you're just like well i gotta make everybody happy and then that was silly romance everyone yeah that was like whoops i just slept with four characters well that's the dragon age two thing yeah it's like oh man but it's like i wanted to they wanted to it's like okay i would like to say that in boyfriend dungeon you can 
bone everybody and it, the game doesn't hold it against you so oh. all right oh, downloading that no, goodbye it, everyone it, this is over is that like the title card you can bone everyone you can no bone yeah. everyone Perfect. Yeah, i'm no adding regrets. to my cart right now right. yep i'm gonna buy it right but, now it's on sale too yep mm -hmm. the circle is back to uh one of you know one of drag age thing but that's the whole thing uh uh, that annoyed some people and other people loved with the Dragon Age 2 was if you were a people pleaser, you just ended up in bed with Anders, uh, you know, in Dragon mm -hmm. Age 2, regardless if you wanted to or not. Like, if you were just nice to him, it was like, whoops. <laughs> that it that's... Boy, fell hard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, was, it was a lot. So it was just like, always. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever yeah. do the sarcastic response, though, when they finally do the do? And then, like, Anders says something really sweet, like, I knew I loved you, but I don't want to hurt you. And if you choose the sarcastic response, Hawk just goes, so you want a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> and it kills me. <laughs> that might be my favorite really response. My husband and I started dating as I, we were just sitting down and I just looked at him and I like burped in his face and I was like, sup, you want a date or something? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Oh, it's good. Uh, All right, let's let's get on to the <laughs> let's get on to this next question. Uh, so, kind of was thinking about is you know there's we were talking about kind of a little bit earlier with like MMOs and stuff like that that there's a lot of genres that take part in the high fantasy overarching genre. Uh, do you all have find that there's one type of game that fits high fantasy best, either for your own preference or overall? you know, tactical RPGs, CRPGs, action adventure, JRPGs, etc. Um, Eric. I feel like CRPGs feel the most right just because that's like what I've most commonly associated with what I guess you call like high fantasy, you know, like D&D mm -hmm. &D mm -hmm. and proper and all that. But I also find that a lot of my favorite fantasy settings end up being from like JRPGs, like even stuff like Valkyrie profile and stuff like that ends up like coming from those places because they they just have cooler designs and stuff the one thing i don't like about like western high fantasy is that it's all very like you know game of thronesy and stuff where everyone's mm. just like oh i'm wearing armor and stuff no i want that sick dragoon armor i want to look cool <laughs> <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you're allowed to be in fantasy and still look cool so yeah, yeah we want um, the fashion you know exactly yeah even talk about like Dark Souls and stuff, you know, it's like mm -hmm. you, can, you can look cool still. So, um, yeah, I I guess in terms of like what I enjoy playing the most in like a fantasy game, it probably is like a tactical RPG, um, which is weird because I've never played Final Fantasy Tactics like the, the first one. Same. Yeah, no, Ray, that face you're making is like the face <laughs> that I've seen from so many people who I will tell I love tactical RPGs and I've never played Final Fantasy Tactics. I've played A2 <laughs> on the DS. I like that one a lot, but I never got around to the first one. So this is Nintendo's fault because it's not on Switch yet. <laughs> this is Nintendo's fault. Yep. This is Nintendo's that's, fault. That's my new excuse, too. Yeah, I'm taking that one. Yep. Bye. <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, how about yourself, Kelsey? Um, I guess I kind of gravitate toward action RPGs. Um, and I like any game that basically has like the exploratory aspect. So if it's, if it leans more open world than not, I'm probably going to be happy just because I like to kind of check every corner and see if there's like, is there lore here? Is there loot here? Is there like, <laughs> is there something cool to, to see? Cause like, I just know how much work has gone into like rendering these areas that I just want to like kind of experience all of it as if I'm actually like walking through the forest or something. Um, and then I just really like fast paced combat. So that's like one thing that I really look for. Like I, I try to do the turn-based thing and I, I have a hard time with that still. I think my, my ADD gets to me sometimes. So <laughs> yeah, turn-based was definitely my preference when I was younger. And as an adult, I just completely and utterly space out when I tried to turn-based stuff is some things can still hook me, but, mm -hmm. uh, I, if I'm going to do turn-based, I want it to almost be like an augmented turn-based, like a Final Fantasy oh, VII yeah. remake, you know, yeah. kind of thing where there's there's a turn-based aspect under the hood, but yeah. it's still action adventure y you know, kind of thing. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, I can do I can do those for sure. But if it's yeah. like, okay, I'm going to throw a firebomb, and then there's like I have to wait, wait five wait rounds for like the, the characters to like do the animation, I'm just like, okay, let's let's speed it up. 
<laughs> yeah, like that's my issue with, uh, you know, we were talking about Divinity Original Sin too. Like I love playing it with friends because we mm-hmm. get the conversation, but if I'm playing that oh, by yeah, myself, my brain honestly can't handle playing as four different characters going through the motions anymore. Like, it's just like, I, I sorry, Ray. I, I just need to, we're, we're all disappointing <laughs> oh, Ray during this topic. Sorry. I just, I, my, my brain can't handle it. I'm just, it, it's, it's I'm like, not, no. I'm not disappointed. I'm thinking of ways to convert you. That's all. <laughs> uh, gotcha. <laughs> change anything Ray, about you. <laughs> Ray, my dear, you could do it. You, you, you could try whatever you like. <laughs> but uh, uh, Liana, how about yourself? Yeah, I think I'm definitely with you, uh, Kelsey, with the action RPG. I want and I want to I want a lore hunt. Give me a reason mm-hmm. to dig mm-hmm. through the caves and and travel to that tree randomly over there. Why do I need to go to that particular tree? Give me a reason. <laughs> Life mm-hmm. purpose. But yeah, I, I I'm I'm the same way though. I I don't have with turn I'm sorry, but with turn base the the story has to be exceptional because I rush like even when I play Baldur's Gate three, I have the mod where it just su- makes it go super fast when you're doing the combat. Part. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm like, bro, I can't just make it go fast. Like I want to do my spells and things. Like I don't want to like skip it. I just on delay. Like move a little bit faster, please. <laughs> there's just, mm-hmm. like the like there, there's like a delay between combat too. Like you'll you'll shoot and then just everybody kind of stands there and just stares at each other and then there's like yeah like the burning animation that goes for like five seconds and then they like start moving and it's like okay <laughs> like I guess I'll go make a snack and yeah come back I thought later. we were killing each other <laughs> staring but all right cool yeah I can't give me give me action give me a reason to stay plugged in because I have a hard time staying focused especially if it's an open world because I will mm, yeah. just kind of get lost in thought and meander without reason so give me give me purpose and give me good fights and i'm golden <laughs> yeah i understand uh ray now that we've shit all over your favorite things what what about yourself <laughs> <laughs> no so like th- like so this is this is why i love this stuff because i i love the action rpg a lot and i love the classic rpg a lot um and that's is for two entirely different reasons it's like you know when I'm in those character driven, like, you know, action RPGs, I love that, you know, I can feel like I'm that character. Like I'm, I'm playing through this story as that character created or, you know, otherwise. But in these like classic RPGs, like when I have this group of people that I have to make synergize and work together and then can make decisions that, you know, may piss this person off and then, or, you know, make this person happy, but it's like, I don't care about that person. So I'm gonna do this anyway, because I don't care what they think. But uh, a later thing happens where I do something and all of a sudden they are appreciative of it. And I'm like, oh, okay. So it's like, it's navigating those relationships that you're kind of creating and like maintaining Mm -hmm. in in a way that is kind of like a a nerdier version of The Sims, but I love it. <laughs> but uh, but I, I love the open worlds where I can go and solve a puzzle and find something that shouldn't have been found. Like, I love that stuff. Or like, you know, finding out, ah, uh, yeah, that guy murdered his wife and nobody was going to find out until you came snooping along. And so I'm like, I got you. And now you're dead too. So uh, it's, it's great. And I, there are so many different things about like all the different styles of high fantasy games that I love you know like now the ones where I can get on a boat and sail on the ocean I love that because it's just mm-hmm. that's cool like that's mm-hmm. like high fantasy to me getting on a boat and just sailing the high seas is great I love that stuff so any of it give me it yeah for me it makes a lot of sense like that the, letting me kind of just set sail and just take in the entire world is something I'm enjoying a lot more as I get older definitely for like most of my youth I was way too damn impatient and like I look back at playing like Dragon Age Origins, for instance, which uh, you know, that CRPG kind of style wasn't necessarily my favorite thing. So I played that game on the easiest setting. Uh, the the I, I did the glitch that was in uh, 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 Ostagar for Origins, where you could just level up, and I would just max up my oh. level at Ostagar, where you just kept bringing back the uh, the the Dark Spawn blood over and over and over again to Duncan without actually getting the uh, the the contracts or whatever from Lilith, uh, you know. Uh, uh, from them and like I would just keep going and go and go and do that until I was max level pretty much and then I would just steamroll my way through the game because I could not stand the combat of the game personally because it was too slow for me and my brain wasn't wired in a way that I could do it uh, correctly Let, to be clear I played as for some reason as a sword and shield warrior with Alistair as yeah. a sword and shield warrior oh. on my very first playthrough so that's why the game was so slow <laughs> on that first playthrough see that's me with MOBAs now I feel like MOBAs are too slow but I don't know what it Bobas is. Bobas are too slow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I I don't know how to interpret it, but was being too slow. But I'm only playing Ray's my first like, one. I need something better, faster. <laughs> <laughs> Speed it up. But yeah, no, but like now, um, that, but I still am kind of in that place that for RPGs in general, I, I'm looking for that action adventure thing. But high fantasy, uh, I kind of like agree with everyone else. Give me something I can explore, whether it's explore in the literal wander around the world sense. So like an Elder Scrolls game is probably my my main one, but just give me anything that I can explore in any way, shape, or form and, and take in more of the lore. So even, you know, three houses kind of fits that vibe because, mm. you know, you're exploring a campus and you're talking to people and there's conversations around you. Anything that I can learn more about what's going on around me, mm. that's the genre I want to play, however they implement it differently. Um, mm-hmm. I also would like to play a high fantasy dating sim because I feel like I've not played enough of those. Can we get the CW on this? I feel like Three Houses <laughs> is already pretty close to being like a CW game. We're, we're so close. It, it, it's really on the cusp, you know what I mean? Like it's 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 just about there. I, I could definitely uh, uh, shoehorn some CW style plotting <laughs> and uh, filler episodes into Three Houses. It's, it's viable. Uh, <laughs> for our uh, I believe this is going to be a last one uh, the last one is what is your favorite class and I'm actually going to augment as well favorite class and least favorite class in high mm. fantasy games the stuff you you just you seek out playing and the stuff that you're like better not kind of mentality and Liana easy favorite dual wielding rogue <laughs> those are schmexy Mm-hmm. and uh least favorite mages because they're really squishy until they're not and i don't have the patience to get to the not part <laughs> <laughs> fair fair that what? was like short simple like no, I, yeah. no, I, I hate I, that I, thought so much like oh my lord I, I, I love i found the question like for you that you're like nope i know the answer i don't need to explain this is what it is boom <laughs> makes sense uh eric I, I, I'm only answering two parts for the favorite one because for me personally, I love, I, I had to learn this over my whole life. I was like, I want to be the person that helps or I want to be the person that does smart things like the major. No, I want to have one entire brain cell and be a berserker and just <laughs> be the moron that runs first into the fight because you get to have mm-hmm. the most fun. You get mm-hmm. to do mm-hmm. the most and you get to like kit your entire being into doing stupid things. And how can you not want to do that? I, I don't understand it. But I will also say that uh, so a game that like recently came out and is kind of like a sleeper hit, uh, Wildermyth. I've been like mm. picking away at it. And the way they do mages in that game, I would normally 99% of the time agree that I don't like mages in games purely because I don't have time for all that like elemental setup and stuff like that. It's just I want my one brain cell. But... <laughs> Wildermyth does this thing where you like infuse objects and then use the nature of those objects to cast your spells. So like you put your magic into the tree roots and then you can use them to like grasp things or you can put it into a table and make it explode to create a splinter blast. And so it's all about like using the environment around you for your magic. Mm, that's cool. And I thought that was like the smartest like take on magic I've seen in a very long time. So mm-hmm. uh, shout outs to Wildermyth for making me like my otherwise usually class that I avoid because I have one brain cell and I'm a berserker. So <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun though. And it kind of, I don't know, it feels a lot more immersive too. If you're yeah. Cause like, that's what a mage I think would generally do is use their environment. Like they're not yeah. just going to have like one fire yeah. spell that they Being pop out with the all the time and all that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's cool. Kelsey, I'll how about yourself? Um, so I definitely do the dual wield, uh, rogue as well. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite because it's very fast paced. They usually tend to be like a pain in the ass, which is always fun. Um, (laughs) and then usually that's like paired with stealth abilities. And, uh, I just like being sneaky in these kind of games for whatever reason that just really speaks to me. Um, and then my least favorite class is probably just like the sword and shield fighter, just because it's kind of basic. Yeah. I don't know. There's just usually not anything that is super appealing. Like I just feel like I'm just playing a guard in the village, sort and of running around like the Uggs and pumpkin mm-hmm. Uggs and pumpkin latte. Pump latte. latte. It's for yeah. people who are too afraid to just dual wield axes and run into exactly. the enemies. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I can tank just as Shields well. Shields are for cowards. <laughs> exactly. I don't need a shield to tank. I could just <laughs> literally like just hold my could one axe and more swords. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, 
Ray, how about yourself? I mean, fair. It's like, why have a shield where you can just have another sword? You know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Very, very fair. Uh, but for me, it's it's definitely, I'm a wizard mage. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like whenever I, I'm playing, and this goes back to like D&D, like, you know, I've, I've been the fighter. I love being the fighter. You know, I love being the Goliath, the big, you know, right? I, I'm the one that's going in first because I'm here to mess stuff up. But it's also mm-hmm. like, I love mm-hmm. being mages because I feel like I have to think a little bit more when it comes to like combat, because yeah, you're right, they're super squishy. And if you put yourself in the wrong spot, it's like, well, uh, you won't last too long here. So mm-hmm. try something else. It's, I, I appreciate that because it does make me like try harder to not put myself in danger, but also be useful. <laughs> and mm-hmm. so, but then there's the payoff of it, you know, when you get further along, it's like, yes, I am now the one who knocks with a <laughs> meteor. And it's great. I love it. <laughs> It's like remember me? I was the one hiding behind the wall shooting a little fireball. Now look, look up there. It's a meteor. Goodbye. Uh, and, uh, um, but I think my least favorite, and I think it's because it's never as cool as it really like is. Is it comes out to be in your head is a ranger. Like and mm-hmm. like, yeah. rangers never. And I don't know what it is in any game I played. Being a ranger has never ended up being like super cool. It's not mm-hmm. how you actually envision it. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I'm just like that. what. Why not? <laughs> Come on. So I wish Ranger, this is my request. Make Rangers cooler, please. Yeah, I know. I agree with you. Cause like, I would want to play as them. I would want to play as a Druid who's like mm-hmm. pretty badass. Mm-hmm. I also want to play as a Bard. That would yeah. be fucking mm-hmm. cool. I just want to be like the guitar guy in Mad Max and just run around, yeah. you know, just like <laughs> killing people with my power chords. I don't know. Yeah. Like, let's do something like that. But yeah, I, I guess I haven't really seen that in a game unless I'm totally missing something. I will say but... Baldur's Gate 3 has made Druids completely badass. Oh, uh, here yeah. oh. Oh, yeah. oh, man. It is. It, they are so wild shape is dangerous, and I love it. <laughs> it does a pretty good job with Rangers, too. Like, I played okay. Ranger in Guild Wars. It was decent. Yeah. Really? Okay. I feel like they do it better than most because you can actually, like, interact with the animals. That's what I want. Your different yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you always like want, my want to be Legolas army. and Eliza Thornberry, you know? At the same time. You just end up being exactly. Eliza Thornberry. <laughs> yeah, I'm a like, modern I... day woman. I could have it all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine, I'm just going to quick round this so we can get to Q&A stuff. Uh, for, for mine, it's uh, if I'm playing an MMO, I like to be a healer. I just, mm-hmm. particularly if it's a healer that allows me to do any like regen, anything over, healing over time stuff, where I could just pepper the entire squad and just get them all doing, you know, things. Uh, I also, if I'm playing a game like a Divinity or something like that, or just a game with friends, anything that I could shout chaos and just berserker my way into a situation and make everyone else's life yeah. hell uh, is a lot of fun. And least favorite is uh, anything that's buffing and debuffing, and that's it. So, uh, I love archery in games, but I hate bard in Final Fantasy XIV mm-hmm. because it is just mm. debuffing and buffing, and I just yeah, do not find that fun at all, personally, uh, just for my personal style of stuff. But uh, yeah, so we got about roughly 10 minutes left. Going to do some... Uh, <laughs> it looks like Matt's mad at me about the bard comment. I've played Final Fantasy Oop. with Matt before, but uh, <laughs> no, so I was gonna say, let's get to the Q and A stuff. We got a few questions here. I'm uh, probably not gonna get through everything the time we have, but let's see. Uh, is there a game type you haven't seen do high fantasy yet? So, like, I guess like a genre type of game that you haven't seen that you would want to see. And I mean, just for me, dialing back, I personally haven't really dealt with high fantasy, like visual novels and dating sims as much. I know there are out there. I can think of a mm-hmm. couple offhand, uh, but I just, but I still feel like I haven't found one that's actually appealed to me personally yet, maybe. But mm. yeah. Uh, what do you, what do you think is like missing? Or I guess like, I, what is like the element that would like really draw you in for like a, I, a visual novel? I don't, I, I gotta be honest, I, I don't know, because uh, visual novels is, are very hard for me to start up and then very hard, for, very hard for me to start up and very hard for me to put down once I've started up is kind of the thing okay. uh, with me. So I think what I would need to pull me in is, I don't know, just proof of, uh, I want to make sure that it's a visual novel that, you know, has romance and all that stuff, but also has the lore behind it mm-hmm. that I'm going to get yeah. engrossed into the mm-hmm. world. The last one I can remember playing was, uh, 
uh, some something something Queen. I can't remember what it was. I was about to recommend Long Live the Queen. Long Live the Queen. <laughs> you oh, would like Long Live go. the Queen. <laughs> Long Live the Queen is amazing. I couldn't remember the exact name of it. that. That was the last one that I really hard vibed with. Okay, gotcha. It's a very good one. But uh, if anyone else has an answer, we won't, we won't go to like the full circle around. Just you know, chime in if you. Uh, I need a high own. fantasy racing game. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, what are you thinking, I, Ray? I'm thinking like buggies and horses and carriages and dragons I, mm-hmm. and dragons. Like I just need like a an over the top, just like wacky, we need... like high fantasy <laughs> racing game. Well, That's we need like want. we need like Three. pod racing, the pod racing yeah. and 64 yeah, game, exactly. but yeah, with like dragons, with dragons. And like, like with dragons. shadow facts and horses yes. and carriages and <laughs> okay. yeah. That's yeah, what I want. Talk to me. Love it. The dragons from birth. Oh my. god. Yeah, I know. That was what I was thinking. Like, I used to do this. I used to do this horse racing sim at arcades where, like, you bred in horses and stuff. I want a dragon breeding game and stuff. So I I want twofold. I want a dragon breeding game where you to race the dragons. I'm gonna Google that for you. Dragon breeding game. (laughs) No, it's not what we're. Badass freaking ranger. Oh my god! But the badass ranger for that too. Like, that's the perfect example. Yeah, finally, that talking animals is going. We gotta make this game, (laughs) y'all. I want to see like a triathlon style thing. Like uh, Grand Theft Auto has a type of racing thing where as you go through like certain checkpoints, it switches you from a car to a boat to a plane. Mm -hmm. I want to see a fantasy version of that where it switches you from a foot race to a buggy race to a horse race to a dragon race. You want Diddy Kong racing, but with like Witcher horses? Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Nailed it. (laughs) Got it. Uh, Finally. (laughs) That's good. A uh, perfect game. Anyone else got one they want to see? I mean, there's been some cool stuff. Like, yeah, you always you always think that like there's not really room and that fantasy is going to be like very locked in. But stuff like, um, I think it's called Kingdom is the one where it's like side scrolling and it's kind of like mm-hmm. a base building game. Yes, oh. like that was a really unique, the raw fear game, take yeah. on 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 fantasy and something that I was like, oh, I wouldn't have thought that you could really do this, but this makes a lot of sense. So, um, I I, I don't know where you go. I would like to see more more dating sim stuff. That'd be fun, or or even just like some evolution into like some of the roguelike sides of things. Um, mm-hmm. because I see things like Star Renegades, uh, which turn like turn based RPGs into a roguelite. And I'd like to see something like that with a high fantasy or, or, or something, but um, it always turns into a question of like, how do you create what fantasy and D&D and stuff like that is while, you know, like also turning into shorter run based stuff. I don't, I don't know what the solution to that is. So I love, I, Star, I, I love Star Renegades, by the way. I'm glad you brought Oh, that. Star Renegades is very good. Yeah. It's a fantastic game. I love it. It's a good time. Okay. Let's see. Uh, what's a moment that you wish went differently in your favorite RPG? Uh, sticking to, let's try to stick the high fantasy for that. When I was talking to Tris and Yennefer. At the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that's yeah. <laughs> Does anyone else have a, a moment though, that they kind of wish went differently? Like either kind of, we were talking about before that you wish you had the agency to do a choice that the game developers didn't program in or, uh, you know, something else to go with it. I like when in Dragon Age Inquisition, when you tried side, I like, I decided, I played like 19 times of the Dragon Age trilogy. And when I play Inquisition, most of the time I side with the mages, but I did like the times where I did side with the Templars because I really liked Sir Barris. Mm-hmm. I really liked yeah. his character. And I really liked Calpurnia and especially like tying into like with Tevinter Knights and things of what we do know from the comics about Tevinter culture. I just found her fascinating and I found her to be a really complex character and even Samson I feel like there he was a there was a mm-hmm. complexity to him that didn't automatically paint him as the villain and I wish there was a time sooner in the story where you could have saved them or given them purpose because I feel like the confrontation you do have with them uh during in the Arbor Wilds I feel like it's too little too late I feel like there could have been a progress towards some some type of reconciliation especially like if that's the when you go with cullen to with maddox and the whole place is lit up with flaming oh, red lyrium yeah. and could you just imagine cullen and samson having 
that confrontation and I don't know I feel like they were really robbed those characters were really robbed of that they had a lot of potential to be something really cool Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel that yeah totally Dragon Age is a tricky one because it definitely feels like a series where like Mass Effect 1 through 3 felt very contiguous in a way Mm -hmm. and like everything kind of clicked Dragon Age you have weird stuff like oh Leliana died in Origins and then like is just here in Inquisition now and hanging out and and she's like Mm -hmm. oh it was a it was a flesh wound don't worry about it I'm (laughs) okay and like they do some neat stuff with that in some respects but I do think like if I'm thinking about things I would change I I like the moments when games like especially if a game gives you agency a lot I think the moments where it takes away that agency is really cool because then it's basically saying like you know, it's, you don't get to control everything. Some things are out of your control. I think that's like cool friction for the player. So really it would be more like, especially in Dragon Age where once you get to Inquisition, it was clear they were trying to start to create like this whole universe with one continuum going on. Mm-hmm. That would be where I would wish they could get some leeway to go back and maybe like smooth out some of the wrinkles in, in Origins and 2 so that way it can like flow yeah. better going into the next games. I don't know. I think for me, the 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 one thing that and, and it's in Dragon Age Inquisition. I think I I wish I could do is uh truly save so. Uh oh, he died. Yeah, he <laughs> says he's coming back. Oh, on. okay. So, yeah. <laughs> save, I, I wish I could like truly save Solus from himself. I really do. Mm-hmm. We may but be able to. Maybe, but like yeah, maybe that it saving it with love. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bone the sense into him, like boom. Back room like, now. That's maybe more than oh, once again, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, I wish I'm like, you have so much potential to be like, you could do so much more good. <laughs> could you imagine if Fenris and him met? Oh. Like, what is what a culture I'm, shock that would be I, for him? I want to. I want that. Uh-huh. I want yeah. Dorian and Fenris to meet. Oh my I, god! Yeah, I want so mm. much. That's my OPP yeah. girl. And I know that's really I know. inappropriate. And I, I was going to say, I've read so many. So. <laughs> I wrote fanfic. I, I like, so many fanfic. My fanfic oh, shit. Yeah. So Dorian is one of my Unroll favorite the characters. Scroll. Period. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I remember I, I love Dorian so much that when, uh, and this is a side tangent, when GTA Online came around and I made my character, uh, all my friends were like, that's just Dorian from Dragon Age. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. Like, like, yeah. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was, but I did it like not even thinking about it. I was just like, oh, yeah, it is Dorian, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I love Dorian, so that's not a problem with me. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I do that with Fallout too. I had the spiffy. I even tried to yep. get like the armor that kind of mm-hmm. looked like his mage robes. Like, okay, Dorian, I miss you, boo. Come back in. I, I need know. you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just I'll let you know he looks. Uh, he looks very nice in a hat. Of course, kind of hat. Mm-hmm. He looks great. Oh yeah, looks very nice and nothing Absolutely. at all. As well. <laughs> <laughs> well, Magic I mean- of speaking speaking of equipment like we mentioned earlier favorite classes and stuff like that but do y'all have like favorite weapons and stuff like that favorite pieces of equipment and all that somebody was asking mm. about that in the q a so mm. the witcher swords i love them yeah those are great. oh the dual uh, witcher swords are so yes. cool i they're love really the witcher nice. swords they're really cool i thought like the customization options too were really good because i i feel like it was a good balance between like not being so overpowered, but you could like mm-hmm. feel the difference when you would do a modification. Mm-hmm. Um, and like basically anything that has like fire damage, I'm very excited about. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. No. Let, let no, no no let me tell you. Um, oh, okay. Having, you, know, you were like hands, about to fight. <laughs> yeah. Now, I was hands like, on me. <laughs> twice with the upcoming video game Tales of Arise. <gasps> you want to uh-huh. talk about sick fire swords and stuff? I mean, that that game, literally, the main character is basically doing a Witcher thing where uh, Alfin has two blades and one of them is the super powered fire Ooh. blade. And it's so sick when he's slashing enemies and then like she's the normal one and pulls out the fire sword to do like a big swing and all that. Yes. It is. I love I'm it. Looking, yeah, that's when, you know, that's when you know this is like this is a fatality coming mm-hmm. up right now. Mm-hmm. Shit just got serious. I love it. Um, the Night Enchanter blade, and I keep talking about Dragon Age. Okay, skip me. No, I love that. No, no, no <laughs> say going, more because I love that one too. Say more. I'm like every time I'm like I'm gonna say a different game this time, and then nay nay, it's the same thing over <laughs> and over again. But Night Enchanter was so satisfying. Mm-hmm. Like it was just you were already kind of overpowered anyway. Like the the fighting mechanics were very unbalanced in Inquisition. As much as I love that game, 
And then all of a sudden you're just like, showing. <laughs> like if I had that, I would be like arrested for in public indecency because I would just be whipping it out everywhere. <laughs> like, every time. <laughs> just, just because I could. <laughs> just because I could, exactly. <laughs> choices <laughs> in great great moment for me to come back into this welcome yes. back. Yep. thank you welcome, welcome. i love it uh yeah uh, anyone else have any other weapon ones uh, i think we have and i think we have time for one more quick question uh, saddest moment okay we're gonna end on this one saddest moment in a high fantasy rpg <gasps> no oh to go do a lightning round of this if you got one. So I mean, for me, it's the it's the it's the mom thing from Dragon Age Two. We already talked about it. Moving mm. on. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think that's gonna probably be mine. <laughs> I got Bo either the chat saying when Jennifer and Tris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When, when, when I'm taking my answers, <laughs> chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good one uh, if anyone has a good one they can fall back on otherwise uh fade choice I, and inquisition yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah. i had to yeah man i had to leave alistair I behind put, i put my i always support low gain back yeah. in like i can't do this choice yeah I, you're old you're going in oh i always have <laughs> yeah, like stroud or someone there like poor oh, stroud yeah. he like shows up all excited and he's like i'm here to help out and i'm like no you're here to die <laughs> like, actually you are here to help out Hawk yeah. deserves to live. Yeah, yeah, I was pained, but then I was like, sorry, Alistair. Like, this is my hero, my legend. She has Did to get you... back to Fenris. So oh. I got, so poor Alistair. He's, uh, he's bye-bye. He's bye-bye. You want to cry? Download, <laughs> go go to Dragon Age Keep and switch out the choices to where Alistair was the one that impregnated Morgan. <gasps> and then be, you have to be the one to tell Morgan and her son why Alistair didn't make it back. Because they have a conversation oh. right before oh, that. Okay. And she introduces Alistair to her son and Alistair has this like really tear jerky moment of like, I'm a father. And, and then if you leave him in the fade, you oh, have to explain man. to Morgan like. Brutal. Oh, sorry. Rude. I'm going to look, th I'm gonna look <laughs> that up. <laughs> oh. The asshole inquisitor playthrough is the worst. Yes. Do you um... like pain? Do this. Yes. <laughs> this is yeah, exactly I'm like, okay, what... great. Sounds good. You like <laughs> to feel pain, pain and pain. cause pain. Yes. <laughs> yes. This, this is, this, the, then, then I have got the playthrough for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, All right. Uh, <laughs> well, I was just going to shout out Meryl's uh, storyline in, in Dragon Age 2 as like just being a lot of sorrow for most of it, especially the oh. end of it where like there's not really good outcomes for Meryl most of the time in that situation. Yes. And yeah. it's just a lot of having to deal with her place in the world and how the world mandates only so many choices for her. And it's like it's a mm -hmm. really tough plot line and it's it's a lot to go yeah. through. So. Uh, shout outs to that. Dragon Age 2 really did not pull some punches it's in some areas. And, not at yeah, all. It's cold. cold. I mean, there's like that whole thing where you can give Fenris back to Daenerys, which, <gasps> which is like the, the way, most Anders, evil like, thing. Supports and you no, he's like, yeah. he's like, good, fuck you. You know, yeah. he's like, what's oh. wrong with you? <laughs> and then Isabella gets pissed. Yeah. Like, mm. Yeah. Rightly so. <laughs> yeah. 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 That is rough. Yeah, I, Dragon Age 2, I wrote a piece yeah. about like this and like I got a lot of hate for it, but I stand by what I said. Dragon Age 2 was a freaking masterpiece because of all the crap it had to overcome. The mm -hmm. fact that you have a game that short with that many repetitious areas and you have that much character growth that's done in an organic way that's memorable and it feels like they're family, that's freaking impressive. And that's a huge yeah. testament to the developer team because they were given a lot of crap from higher oh, ups. Yeah. Leadership was mm -hmm. all over the place. They had cut resources. They were given cut deadlines at a drop of a hat. And they still gave us character arcs like Isabella's and Sebastian's and Meryl's mm -hmm. and just, ah, Dragon Age. Agree. Agree. Like, well, I mean... Yes. There is my first question for the next section. Oh, <laughs> All right. Oh, no, no, okay. but, no, but like, no, but it's, it, no, but it's genuinely, I, I, I agree with a lot of what you said here, but that being said, as we mentioned, the next section. So first section was all about high fantasy. The next section is going to be that deep dive into Dragon Age. We've got a bunch of questions related to it. We will, once again, at the end of that, take our, our lovely Q&As. But at this point, we're going to be taking a 15-minute break, and we'll be back. But before we go, I just wanted to say you know, thank you all for joining us for this first half of the evening's discussions. 
just so you know, uh, if you're here or you know you're tuning in or whatever, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Bear Punch. Liana is Dirty F and Hippie. Eric is at C Moosey. Ray is at Ray Apollo, and Kelsey is at K D Lunas. And uh, by the way, make sure you tune in Sunday at 6 p.m. Central for our Twitch watch party. It's about why those Twitch watch party of em- Evangelions Thrice Upon a Time sponsored by Amazon Prime Video. And with that, we'll see you all in about 15 minutes. Bye. Bye.